This is episode three of Real Shift Radio with special guest Joanna Burks. Are you ready for the shift? Are you ready for security, balance, and freedom to do the things that you want to do? It all starts with the shift. My name is Dominic Labriola. I'm a real estate broker and developer, and each week I sit down to speak with the most inspiring people in the real estate industry to bring you stories of shift, successes, challenges, aha moments, and overall best practices to help you live your best life. This is Real Shift Radio. Welcome back to Real Shift Radio. I have to tell you, shifters, I am so excited. I'm so excited to bring you this next guest, Miss Joanna Burks. Not only is her message a positive one, but it's a message that is rooted in simple philosophy that is easy for anyone, everyone, to absorb and practice. Most importantly, it's a message that inspires real shift. Joanna started her career in real estate development, but when the recession hit and business slowed, she was forced to switch paths. Hear how she was able to take this experience, these tools she had collected and honed, and shift into her new social media-fueled career in food, fitness, and fun. Miss Joanna Burks, thank you for joining me for Real Shift Radio. I am so excited to have you on the podcast today. We met a couple of years ago through the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society's team and training. Yes, and we did. I would love for you to give me a little bit more of a background on how you got to be involved in your current business. But since this is a show rooted in real estate, let's yes. let's step further way back to uh, the first day we met. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, I love sharing energy and wellness on the topics of. Uh, the best life and it is amazing that you and I have such a connection because my transition if you will um, was from real estate mm -hmm. my background was in land development and home building and we took quite a hit right before I mm -hmm. met you I worked for a very aggressive builder and we were done we folded up shop and I was out of a job mm. out of a career and so I made the leap um, through fitness Mm -hmm. During that transition, I was blessed with the gift of stillness, quietness, and accepted the invitation to come down and transition into the fitness world, mm -hmm. which is where I met you. Yeah. I was brand new in fitness back then mm -hmm. um, and wide open to everything, and boy, has it taken off. Um, that was my first marathon. Mm -hmm. I am now committed to number six. Wow. Yeah, so my running career has flourished, uh, <laughs> and as well as my profession. I am so thankful to say that um, through fitness and clarity, I have rocked the past couple of years and really come to merge my what I thought um, my last career was dead. I thought it was gone and over. Mm -hmm. I really have merged my old career with my new career. Mm -hmm. Present day fitness and operations to help people uh, find and clear their path mm -hmm. for wellness. So that's where I am today. Awesome. Big transition. I really, I really resonate with your message so much and I know that you have utilized a couple of things really well, Facebook and Instagram mm. to help kind of share what, what you're doing and we're gonna go a little bit off the, the sure bring it you're yeah. on my favorite topic now <laughs> so. social media is one of my favorite topics so no. yeah so i definitely want to have you kind of go into a little bit what what you're sharing and what you're bringing light with with those tools um first social media is what you make of it and i'm very clear and very deliberate about what i choose to make of it i, I speak on three topics mm -hmm. Fitness, food, and attitude. Mm -hmm. um, that allows me a lot of freedom to not talk about every topic under the sun mm -hmm. <laughs> and strictly speak in the areas that I feel most comfortable with because you know I share a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I try and keep a fine line. Bottom line, it's all free. Mm -hmm. 
fun and to be used in, in teamwork. I build a team. Uh, I share everything I have, no secrets, no holds barred, and help people, you know, that your reach in social media is unbelievable. And so what I can do with social media is from all corners of the earth, I can link together and make a giant team of like minds. I can't support every single person's journey, mm -hmm. but I can ra help raise an energy, create a like-mindedness, a safe, healthy, ha ha happy, you know, playground, and then get you guys to rely on each other mm -hmm. and network each other and answer each other's questions because I can't answer every question. Yeah. I'm not the prep, you know, the boss of every area. <laughs> no. um, so to elevate people into an in elevate people to inspire each other people, you know, and reach out and share. That's what I'm doing on social media. Awesome. Uh, it is awesome. It feels awesome. The energy that comes back to me is amazing. So I just started sharing, by the way. This is all organic. This is all because I was manifesting feelings that were too good not to <laughs> just say out loud Yeah. Um, in my coaching. Fitness was one thing. So I'm in the fitness. And really then uh, on a personal level behind the scenes, I am having this revelation, spirituality, uh, reconciling all these great parts of my life. And I just can't help but share. Mm -hmm. And I start merging that into my coaching and getting amazing results. And then the feedback, the consistency, the more consistent I was with my vocabulary, the more you guys started to answer back, man. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for speaking up. And I was like, I was blown away by <laughs> it. Um, but the more I feed it, the more it feeds me back. So wow, it's amazing. Um, professionally, I know a lot of networking is a necessary part. Mm -hmm. And it used to be such a chore for me. Networking used to be so hard for me and for several reasons. But social networking is far more like-minded. Mm -hmm. You are not in a room of total strangers. You've gathered together for one reason or another because you have something in common. Mm -hmm. And so it's a pretty comfortable place to, to reach out and, and meet with other people. Far more than my introverted self in a big room of people mm -hmm. so how do you feel about you mentioned being introverted how how do you define that and what do you think that means to you I pay great respect to my introverted self <laughs> um, I think that I didn't used to nurture it. I am uh, an introvert with an extroverted personality. Mm -hmm. But what I honor and I think what is key to my happiness right now is that I allow that my time, myself for my, my time and my space for mm -hmm. myself. That I need to clear my calendar. I am a person who's actually better off not being the center of attention, not attending every meeting. Not I need more space than that and I didn't mm -hmm. used to know that. Mm. So now I honor my introverted self, pull back my calendar and found my own happiness. Mm -hmm. And again, with that stillness, the stillness comes in there too with the introvertedness. I didn't used to be comfortable in silence. I didn't mm -hmm. used to be comfortable in my own skin. And now I am. And so that allows me to honor my introverted side. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people do that. No. So I help people with that. That plays to even the space that you've put yourself in, like physically, you've, you've changed so much about that. Can you share with our listeners that path and, and how they can move themselves in a different direction to, to kind of find that space? Absolutely. Um, the stillness. I think it was back at all the way up. I think okay. the, the platform that I got during my transition, I went through something where I used to have all the money and resources I possibly could ever ask for. I worked very hard for them. Um, but I was massively unhappy after a while. Hmm. Into my, you know, cruises through my 20s and into my mid-30s, but was really screaming unhappy. Moving entirely too fast, got caught up in way the wrong crowd. Nothing outlandish, but a whole series of circumstances that had me living just way outside of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, then you add some alcohol to that, some overstimulation, you know, and I was truly an unhappy person. Mm -hmm. So 
with the simultaneous happening of the recession, I was also having a mad spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. And so I was blessed with, you know, you could see this as a blessing or a curse. When I came down here when the recession forced me to move away or I chose to move away, it also brought me from complete chaos to complete silence, Mm -hmm. which was a crazy change and the best gift ever. So the world, the universe made these choices to say, I'm going to take everything away from you. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is outlandishly hard, incredibly unfair, but I'm going to do this to you. And if you can be quiet and listen, I'm going to give you everything you need in return. And somehow I will tell you the silence immediately felt better than the chaos. Mm -hmm. And I had the presence of mind to throw my hands up at the very I'll say at the very beginning of the journey and say okay <laughs> let's go uh, I will be quiet what I have been doing is hard I recognize mm-hmm. that and this feels quiet and I like that mm. um, and so again what possibly be the, har- the hardest time I had the least amount of resources no job going to school with a very uncertain future mm-hmm. at 35 years old was really the stillness that I needed and that I never would have had the courage to do on my own. Mm -hmm. And so through that came the gratitude next. Mm -hmm. Even though I had nothing, I felt better than I'd ever had in my whole life. Mm. And I was able to build upon that. Um, So yeah, I was gifted stillness (laughs) and chose to recognize it. And now I've come to know in my job, I'm in the people business. I'm in the people industry. And I have come to know that stillness is what we all need. Through yoga, I added on Mm -hmm. and and have come to really embrace my spiritual side, which I was so disconnected from before. I wouldn't even have known what you were talking about. So the gift that I received brought me more happiness and so I take that gift back now <laughs> to the overworked, stressed out, um, how to shape people who maybe feel stuck mm. and share my tools with them. Share the gratitude, share the silence, get them to slow down mm-hmm. so they can actually just take a big breath and feel, you know, start to feel their life. Yeah. Start to feel their life. I was moving entirely too fast. Can we, can we go back to, where are you from originally? You, you Sacramento. Oh, okay. So Sacramento. you're you're a Cali look girl. At, yeah, to look begin at my with. face smile. Okay. I love Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, and when you're involved in the real estate industry, mm-hmm. was that work that was outside of Los Angeles? Sacramento. Okay. Mm-hmm. So so you really you were born and raised okay. uh, construction up there. Yeah. Okay. And. Tell me a little bit about that path and how the tools in that career have carried over. So, w- what were you doing in in your work Busy in construction? Busy Yeah, I started at the bottom. Um, I had made some bold choices. I've always been a bold decision maker, but I put mm-hmm. myself in new home construction on purpose and started at the bottom. I started out with in the field with the boys. Okay. And built my way up to uh, vice president of customer relations director of customer relations and was running the show over there start to you know I'm a process girl Mm -hmm. which is what you're gonna see how it relates to how I run my business now Mm -hmm. Um, Johnny on the spot I was the girl to go to to put out the fire to solve the problem to build the team Mm -hmm. Um, that was my role okay kind of of many hats what I thought when I first got here, how does that transition? Mm-hmm. When I first started in fitness, this is a great tie. <laughs> um, I knew I, I knew nothing. I literally was the new kid on the block. No matter where I went, everybody in the room knew more than I did. Mm-hmm. So you want to talk about having to recognize your ego really fast mm-hmm. in order to not be in your own way. Try being in a room of full of people who don't care where you came from, who don't want to hear about what you just went through. They're just doing their job and they all know more than you. Mm -hmm. So your past is nothing and you need to shut up and learn from everybody around you. Mm -hmm. And so I did. I learned fitness. 
after that, you really it became time to move again. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to move. I got, I have to grow this. I'm making seventeen dollars an hour, by the way, practicing my my craft. <laughs> Get I, it's what I had to do. You yeah. just have to be quiet and be the new girl, mm-hmm. and and build yourself. And so I did. And then when it was time to move, nobody had a plan. Nobody in fitness doesn't. I want to say nobody. They don't, they don't do a lot of new moving. But the number one thing they don't do is a lot of collaborating. There is mm. no sharing in fitness. It is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Um, and so I was all on my own quick when, mm. when I'm thinking, I need a 401k again. I need a life. I, how do we get out of this gym? How do we make a bigger impact on people? How do we share our message? Yeah. And I had to turn literally outside of fitness and go back and realize quickly, I need to build myself a team. hmm that you need to, so that's when my operations brain came back. This is going to tie to social media, check this out. Mm -hmm. I'm stumped, I'm ready, I'm hungry, I've got enough information, I wanna run, I feel like it's my time, I've paid my dues a little and I wanna go out there and nobody wants to help. Mm -hmm. So I turned to Twitter. Never been on Twitter in my life, but I'm thinking in this city, I'm brand new to LA. Mm -hmm. Who is in this city? making money where is the money where are the people in my industry what are they doing i want to do what they want to do literally literally who's out there and where are you what streets are you on what what restaurants are you hanging out at who are you i want to know who is living the lifestyle that i want Mm -hmm. and this just hit me one day this is crazy so i'm sitting in bed and i blow up twitter and i just start wrap wrap you know listing off all these people whose lives and lifestyles i admire Mm-hmm. Who lives their truth? It was Kat Von D. It was Rob Deirdrick. It was um, all kinds of Dr. Uh, Wayne Dyer. All mm. of these other people. You know, spiritual, um, young and brash. It didn't matter. They had something that I wanted to emulate. Mm-hmm. And the amazing part was almost every single person I looked up was speaking of gratitude. Ah. Crazy. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Amazing. Whoa. Because again... I have a professional thing going on. This this professional thing is happening to me, but I am mm-hmm. also having a major spiritual awakening through this whole thing. Yeah. And here they are colliding now, big time. Whoa. Okay. Here's now now these power the people that are making money are the people that are sharing. Mm-hmm. Whoa. The people who are not sharing with me are the ones who don't have any money. Mm-hmm. Very clear. Stick to plan B. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so every day, just like when I was in the office. Bottom line, I would fire up that Twitter feed and have my own operations meeting for the day and just get pumped and think big and listen to big people who had big things to say Mm -hmm. during the smallest time of my life. Mm. It was my own private people or my own private meeting with a bunch of people that didn't even know they were in it, but I was using my resources, obtaining the energy I needed. Mm -hmm. And what do you know, the second I looked out there, the second I reached out, those people were right there. I just had to reach Mm -hmm. and blammo. Further, so. further proof in the gratitude, the law of attraction. Mm-hmm. People are the more you share, the better it is. The more you give, the better it is. You don't hold any information, any love, anything. That is my philosophy and my policy, which is absolutely against the grain in fitness mm-hmm. to share so much. So, yeah. What do you know? My old career is what helped me be successful in my new career. So. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Do you have a, a mantra that you live by or or do you have multiple mantras that you one that I like to say I am alive, I am awake, I am energized. I say that probably five times a day. Mm-hmm. And take a nice like when you when I do it, just take a nice <laughs> deep breath. I am alive, I am awake, I am energized. And that is, to me, so powerful to me. just kind of elevates me. It reminds me, A, be grateful you're alive. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, you're awake. Don't be that girl who's always talking about being tired. And you are energized. And that's enough to propel me Mm -hmm. daily. Um, I pair that with, I will tell you, in addition to that mantra, one of the things that I practice, and it is huge in every client I have, is pairing that with stepping away from your desk for a moment, stepping away from whatever situation you're in for a moment Mm -hmm. and taking a moment for yourself to relax and enjoy and connect with your spirituality, Mm -hmm. to empty yourself or your brain a couple times a day. 
that can, is the key to my success. <laughs> how can someone do that if they're, I mean, at their desk, where do they go? These are the things I did not used to know. This is the part where I'm so excited. Um, literally, A, walk towards the sun. Mm. <laughs> walk near or around the sun, but fresh air, number one. I don't mm-hmm. care where you are. If you can just step away and get some fresh air. It has an amazing uh, effect, a re- restorative effect, instant restorative effect on our energy. And sometimes the active practice of exhaling whatever situation you were just in Mm-hmm. And I literally, here's my other one, space and grace. When I take a breath in, I just fill myself up with space and grace. And that allows me the room to move around, a little buffer zone between me and the world real quick. Mm-hmm. And the grace to just accept what it is. Mm. Non- non-resistance. Grace is accepting. And then I can, I do that, I literally do that. Oh, oh I do it. Anytime I change situations, mm-hmm. to be fully present. I did that in the elevator before I got here. Mm-hmm. Just to let go of parking and everything that just happened and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. And to be able to be clear and present for where, I, where I'm going to be. So, mm. um, I do. I ask my clients, we do a 1030, a 1230, a 330, and then before you go to bed. Mm-hmm. That gets you away from your desk multiple times a day or, or your position in life multiple times a day to restore yourself Mm -hmm. unbelievably powerful and that doesn't take long we we overthink it we overthink it I think that's the part that I I love so much where my excitement comes from my philosophy people I are always surprised by what I come at them with Mm -hmm. I want to lose 80 pounds I want to manifest a new job I need to release some of my past uh, the answer is uh, stand up, step away, and take a breath. <laughs> what? <laughs> I know. It's amazing. Then the other thing is say 10 really nice things to yourself while you're there. You know, mm-hmm. There are all these things that we, t- we used to look outwards for. Mm-hmm. I was always looking for more, to do more, to have more. And really the entire time, I never knew. It was just me. Mm-hmm. This is all we have. This is my responsibility. Mm-hmm. Once I take care of this, myself, my being, my mind, everything else goes better. Mm-hmm. Everything else. So, slowing down, inviting the stillness. And that's what I help people do is just put some steps behind it. What does that mean? What does that mean? Mm-hmm. I need to invite stillness into my life. It's as simple as stepping up and stepping away. Mm-hmm. Yay. So what kind of people are you bringing onto your team in your business? Mm -hmm. Who do you want to be around? It's amazing um, who's being delivered to me. Here's the great part. Um, I took huge risks. We take huge risks being Um, self-employed. This second career, this second rebirth, this second time around, I absolutely understand and respect that this is my journey. And that I get to do what I want to do. I really that takes some that takes some some serious work and a mm-hmm. lot of clarity. But I wait for people to be delivered to me that feel absolutely in line with my vision, and they're few and far between, and that is mm-hmm. a okay. <laughs> um, you can imagine being in LA and being in fitness. How many people have come at me? since the day I got here Mm -hmm. Um, oh I'll make you famous or oh you got great energy oh I'll make you a star over here and none of that is where I'm going Mm. none of it feels right sure I dip my toe in a few waters here and there just enough to learn protect your own message Mm -hmm. believe in your own message Um, so I anytime I feel resistance I just know that's not a person that I want to do business with And if I wait patiently, because sometimes it's a little lonely, Mm -hmm. sometimes it's a little lonely, um, the right people will be delivered to you. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess that's twofold. It takes courage to make the decision to actively step away from people that are trying to obtain your time and energy. Mm -hmm. That takes space and grace, right? Mm -hmm. Space and grace. And then on the flip side, wait patiently in that space for the the right person to be delivered to you. Mm -hmm. So... All natural, champion language, 
of service in every way, those are the people that I'm looking. However they come, whatever shape they come in, whatever size they come in, Mm -hmm. whatever uh, industry they come from, because they're coming from all wellness is this just, happiness is this giant relatable industry. Mm -hmm. So I'm being served mentors left and right. So my clients are mentors. I feel so blessed that I get to coach, that I have any right coaching some of these brilliant minds that are coming my way. Mm -hmm. I'm learning as much from every client as I am, (laughs) as I'm sharing with them. Absolutely. (laughs) And that's when you're dealing with energy, when you're doing something that is your passion. I mean, it's unbelievable. So, Speaking about mentorship, who Mm -hmm. have been your mentors? I will tell you, I have had so many mentors in my life it's crazy um i don't know how or why i was blessed with that gift to look for and adopt people Mm -hmm. um i in business always look in anything look for the smartest person in the room Mm -hmm. always look for i have known that i don't know how i knew that but i have always looked for who who knows what's going on here Mm -hmm. and my attention has always been drifted towards them Mm -hmm. Uh, male female business spiritual it doesn't matter um, I love, I have a lot of spiritual mentors right now, and I'd love to name some of those because, Do, the, yeah, right? Spirituality, well, I mean, business mentors are everywhere. But this is fun. Who even knew that there are men and women out there who just have this powerful language and want to share it and mm-hmm. feel absolutely that it is their gift to share? It? That is amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I want to be in that club. I am in that club. I yeah. love it. But Gabby Bernstein is okay. rocking my life right now. And what does she rock my life for? She's another voice out there that is just fun and friendly and telling you, you be you and talking to you in spirituality outside of a church. I love that. Mm -hmm. She has a very funky, fresh vibe to her that just makes you go, oh yeah, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's appealing. People, it's appealing to me. Her style is amazing. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer. I mean, I could listen to that man all day long, the wisdom and the knowledge coming out of him. Um, But both of those two people produce amazing free information. They're Mm -hmm. everywhere. And so I use them currently as my little audio boost during the day. Mm -hmm. Um, I use, I get my little doses of spirituality from Gabby, from Dr. Wayne, from The Secret. Uh, The Secret on audio is those amazing little Mm -hmm. um, blurbs. And so I don't have to have a giant spirituality hour or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'll pop on, I'll turn off the music and turn on Gabby Bernstein on my way into a meeting and just power up real quick Mm -hmm. and get a little spiritual dose. Um, I rock the morning 405 to Wayne Dyer all the time. (laughs) TED TV. TED. Mm. I will turn off the TV and turn on Ted and wash dishes and, and do my and do my chores like that. Mm-hmm. Um, who knew you could get spirituality in doses like that? Before I was into it, I didn't even know what that meant. So yeah. these fun, new, fresh, inviting ways to get in touch with your spirit mm-hmm. and, your, and your spiritual side. Tell me about how your day flows. What do you do when you wake up in the morning? Attitude of gratitude party every <laughs> single day. Um, this is another one I love to share, but there's um, there's definitely a flow to my day. Flow is a great word um, that I would use to describe my day. Um, it's up to me, and I know this. From the second I open my eyes in the morning, I dictate everything that happens to me and mm-hmm. things are going to happen but how it happens how I feel about it how I let myself feel about it and so I regulate straight away I put my personality in my pocket and I just simply wake up saying thank you literally out loud getting out of bed <laughs> hey Wednesday what's up ready to go what? I know this by now I've done it for so long you know what I mean that I know this Wednesday is going to be the sexiest Wednesday I've had in a long time. Boy, I feel rested. And I just start going through things. I don't even allow, bottom line, I don't even allow anything, any other outside sources in first. Mm. I start my chatter before I turn on the news, before I engage with other people, before I check my emails, before any of that happens. I have my gratitude list. Mm. And I simply just get straight and get grateful for every goofy thing you've ever had. And that sets my attitude second one I lay out the calendar in a very I'm still a manual calendar girl Mm -hmm. (laughs) I lay it out on the counter and I visualize my day 
and I picture the people that I'm going to encounter and I um, kind of try and lay out the energy I think I might experience. I, I try and recognize where I might have resistance mm -hmm. and picture a win and, and I roll through my calendar just like that. And I don't anticipate problems, but I look, how can I make everything go my way, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And see if I can win in every situation. So visualize awesome. it. That way I'm not, again, rushing from one meeting to another and not present and kind of not having laid out in my head what's about to happen. I have an idea in my heart and in my head. And I would say that, let's back up and cover that real quick. In my heart, when I visualize, I go for feeling. How do I want this to flow? How do I want it to feel? I know what the end result might need to be. But I think my value is how can I get us there in a friendly way? Mm -hmm. By thinking that, I've done a preemptive strike against any hostile or any kind of adverse feelings that might have. I've already practiced feeling good in that situation. Mm -hmm. So much easier, right? Yeah. Rather than being caught off guard and caught in the moment. So mm -hmm. that that's the flow of my day and that's every day. First gratitude, second visualization, the way it is, mm. every day. I really am into separating time and space. I don't think that everything should just flow into one big day and night, day and night. Mm -hmm. um, I really like to visualize and release. So how much of your day are you spending working? Mm, that is a fantastic question. Um, and I am really proud to tell you less than ever. I am, I, well, let's back up on that. I feel like I'm at work less than ever. Uh -huh. um, I will say inspired action is effortless. You know that saying. And a lot of times I'll catch myself at work and I don't even realize that I'm working. Or I'll catch myself being of service and I don't even recognize it. You spent an hour of your day being of service. So that feels good, number one. Mm -hmm. um, but number two, I here's, here's kind of the, the flow of my day is even being self-employed. I know the value of shutting off, starting mm -hmm. work and finishing work. Um, keeps me fresh and ripe. So I wake up at 4.30 every morning. Um, it's very early. <laughs> I know, I'm, a, I'm an early riser, but I wake up, that, so that's why I say, uh, I wake up with creative ideas. I wake up, um, my ideas wake me up sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so I get going and that's um, my social media time uh, when I have some of my fresh I pick my topic for the day so I'll write usually from 4.30 to 6 is like coffee and writing mm -hmm. and then around 8 I start to turn on the I'm sorry 7 I turn on the email and I answer email and kind of dip into my, my business day mm. uh, I'm very careful not to dip into business until I finish my creative then I touch my business day and I outline it I visualize it mm -hmm. 8 o'clock every day computer off go outside for my workout mm. no matter how no matter what I just opened in that email no matter how stressful no matter what I know I have learned honor my fitness and my health mm -hmm. step away when you come back when I resume working at 10 o'clock mm -hmm. um, everything will be better every single thing will be better I will be fresher, I will be more organized, I will be in line with everything I intend to have happen in my life if I go out and honor my body and my mind first. So, mm. money second. Money comes after work. After, I'm sorry, after my After spirit. working on yeah, yourself. Yeah, myself, <laughs> work, work is me. And I know that now. And that has turned out to be, in my coaching, um, one of the number one things I work with. Mm. I, th I think that's awesome, I think that's amazing that that has, um, that that is a service to people, that you lose weight from teaching people to step away from their desk, that you act just from the act of stepping away from your desk mm -hmm. and separating that. So 10 o'clock, I'm back at work. Um, and then I am usually done at four or so. Okay. And done is done. When I'm done, I am um, not connected to work anymore, and I really honor that. Mm -hmm. um, you can chase a dollar everywhere, always, always. So I, I have so many people. The second half of my training industry is at night, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many people I have to say, no, I no longer train at night? I mean, mm -hmm. that, that's turning away money to mm -hmm. honor 
my writing. My writing doesn't happen. If I stay out and train all night, because I could train all night, mm -hmm. uh, I can't honor what I really want to do, which is n nurture the second career of writing and speaking. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, it's a tough move for me, but mm -hmm. that's how I have to work is over at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. so. And in the long run, I'm more profitable. Like I just said, I work less than ever. That's amazing to me. That's amazing to me. So how do you, how do you see that shift? Where did that happen? Where you went from giving away information to now being compensated? How did how did Good that question. come? Good question. Good question. Boy, that came patiently, and that came. You know, I just had to wait, and I'll tell you that I used to hike and walk and hike and walk and try to because I'm, I'm rebuilding a career here, right? I know mm -hmm. training wheels on as a trainer, uh, but I'm a type A career woman <laughs> going, Where does this go? Where am I going? What am I doing? How am I going to get there? How do you know, walking and walking and hiking and thinking and walking and getting better at it and evolving? And then, so what is this? Because remember, two worlds are colliding, I am mm -hmm. having epic, spiritual, off-the-chart, <laughs> heart-blowing, mind-blowing things that are happening at work. Like, my two worlds are massively colliding, mm -hmm. spirituality and work. And so, knowing, though, it has to end, it just has to equal something, right? I was so patient with being a student. I did not want to rush this career. And a couple times, I'm like, is it a book? Is it a what? What is this? And I kept thinking, the answer is you don't know. Mm -hmm. The answer is you need more time. The answer is you just need to shut up and be a student. And so as it comes down to this, because you kind of you're also looking around to your peers, what are you doing? How are you making money? How are you? What are you? How do you? Mm -hmm. What are you selling? The ultimate amazingness, awesomeness of the whole thing. This only came to me maybe six months ago my actual process my method overnight came to my head this is what i sell mm -hmm. i sell a schedule i sell a sell a philosophy i sell an eight point organizational outline that helps people get clarity mm -hmm. Do you know how long it took to get to that, right? <laughs> do you know, is it a gym? Do I own a gym? Do I want to wow. do this? Do it's I want to, how, what four does, or five what, years now what does this equal? But I was so quiet as a, a long version to the, but do you know how many times I thought about this? Because again, the type A in me, the personality in me wants to know what this equals, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing all this work. What is this going to equal? And the other half of me is going, shh. This is awesome. <laughs> Just let it happen. Just keep, you'll know when the answer comes to you. Mm -hmm. You'll know when it arrives. I've been doing the consulting for two years now. Mm -hmm. I've been switching out of the fitness game for days. Mm -hmm. But only six months ago did it come to me overnight. This is now, it's now it's your turn mm -hmm. to make the money. Now, your gift, and it's un, it's not forced. It mm. came right to me. I didn't have to make it up. I didn't have to beat down doors. And the the, the greatest part, it's mine. Uh, mm. Not mine as in possessive. To teach your own message, oh, mm -hmm. not somebody else's message. Mm -hmm. To know that at the end of this whole thing, I am making money being me, mm. and, and sharing my you know great energy. That's awesome. Really cool. Right, and it couldn't have come any sooner. It couldn't have come when I was working on it uh, back then because I wasn't ready. I hadn't mm -hmm. received all my gifts yet. I hadn't been through the trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. I, uh, the, it came to me when I deserved it, when I had done the work to be deserving of it. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, patience is a virtue on that one. Mm -hmm. Every day you wake up going, when am I going to make my money on this? The answer is when you work to be deserving of it. Mm -hmm. And that's what would drive me every day. That's what would drive me. Just pay your dues. Shut up and pay your dues. You made a big physical transformation. How, mm -hmm. how are you, are, were you overweight when you were young? I was, no, no. 
I was just average, just the average. Okay. Not athletic, not overweight, no, nothing. Um, right around 26, I started putting on weight. Mm-hmm. Right around 30, I started getting kind of drunk and blurry, you know, a little mm-hmm. happy hour and just really started putting on weight. Packed on a good 40 pounds just mm-hmm. from happy hour and being lazy and um, not paying attention to myself. Mm-hmm. So by the time I plugged in to fitness, I was really flirting with depression mm-hmm. big time. I had ignored myself for way too long. hmm and I was a good um, teetering at 150, but the the bottom line was I I didn't know how to stop that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was blowing through pant sizes like crazy. So um, I plugged into fitness. I was really literally tired of crying and being sad and overweight, and it was like I just didn't know how to help myself. I just didn't know. I, life was super overwhelming, and so I plugged into fitness and. The first day I went to boxing class, I was hooked. I was shocked, and I was hooked. And that was in um, 2007. Okay. And I never looked back. <laughs> <laughs> so fitness got me through. Fitness woke me up and got me to pay attention at least. So uh, it was something to do. Bottom line, it was something to do. I was mm-hmm. desperately searching for something that would make me feel better. And it at least stopped me from feeling bad. Mm-hmm. Um. I got good and mentally healthy long before I ever even dropped a pound. <laughs> mm-hmm. I just felt better about myself. I felt like I'd been behaving more in line. Was this before Second you lost your job? Yes. Or? Okay. Yes. About a year. Um, this is 2008-ish. Yeah, is let one. me backtrack real quick and just saying sliding into the recession... That's why the recession and the spiritual awakening crashing at the same time was like the most beautiful disaster you've ever seen in your life because going into that recession, I was also at a personal low, Mm -hmm. a very personal low, just a series of bad decisions and just understimulated and kind of hit my rock bottom, Um, hanging with the wrong crowd that happens in our 20s and 30s when we start making money and moving a little faster than we need to be. Mm -hmm. And I was just cloudy. So I turned to fitness. And it nurtured me through that dark time, Mm. brought me some light. I hadn't seen light in a long, long time. And instantly I could see light again and delivered me through the last year of the layoffs. Mm. Um, Because you got to remember, I was laying off the very people we hired, (laughs) Mm. laying off your family, laying off them. And so I actually came out of that on layoff day more clear than I'd been in years. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm tired of the loss, right? Tired of being tired. Mm -hmm. And when it finally came, when the day finally came, I was so relieved. Mm -hmm. And well into my fitness journey. And then really just kept answering the fitness call from there. Mm -hmm. Um, Went to school. Once I plugged the nutrition in, I got the dual certification. Mm -hmm. And when I plugged the nutrition in, life changed drastically. Okay. Drastically. Um... The, the body transformation. Um, I was trained by professional MMA fighters, Team Alpha Male out of Sacramento. Tremendous blessing, crazy mentors, um, but nobody was talking to me about nutrition or anything like mm. that. I, they were just trying to make me mentally stronger and a better person. Um, that got me to school. And then once I hit the nutrition and started eating for energy, um, I dropped, I changed. Uh, overnight almost it seemed like I had a six pack (laughs) right (laughs) so that's the crazy part that nobody can see on the podcast Um, that I to this day there is never a day under the sun that I don't go that is crazy that I have I am shredded and it's bananas it never gets old I mean it's fun right (laughs) it never I never did it on purpose that is through nutrition six packs come from nutrition That is strictly nutrition. I never expected it. And you can work in a gym all day. And so transformation number two came from nutrition. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite posts on your Facebook page are your nutrition posts. Mm. And the feedback I get is awesome. they, They really have helped me 
it's especially tough for me as a single guy to fuel myself in a way that is not going to be like detrimental to me <laughs> and and to like prepare food that I'm not going to get sick of eating. Yes. So such realities. How have you designed that? Um from real life perspective real life how I have designed it is to bottom line my education so that allows me to pick certain foods food choices um, but second of all I think that I'm like your twin version of a single guy <laughs> that's how I designed no wonder it we're such good friends. right no wonder you like my food I love food but I don't love cooking mm -hmm. um, I love food but I don't want to be in the kitchen all day. I mm. love feeling good and I know that food has to happen. So the bottom line is how fun, how friendly and nutritious can I make it? Mm -hmm. Boom. Bottom line. That's what? why there are so many smiley faces on right? your food. <laughs> <laughs> so the food again, totally organic. Mm -hmm. So I start, uh, I'm going to back up real quick and say okay. that the photos that you see the feedback was or the feedback was crazy and instant and organic that mm -hmm. no i never intended to um publish food Make photos viral yeah. food photos what was happening well, yeah exactly right <laughs> and literally the say they were going crazy instantly so i became known as this girl um uh, i'm a natural trainer i am I'm, I'm two things i'm a trainer and a nutritionist mm -hmm. which are separate fields altogether mm -hmm. so I was instantly a standout at the gym because I had this crazy polka dotted bag of mystery snacks that I fed myself and my clients from so that kind of became just a normal habit that I had made me extremely popular in the gym and mm -hmm. everybody wanted to know what's in your bag what's in your bag and so I started posting because clearly again I'm brand new at this right yeah. I don't know all these people keep asking what's in my bag and they're shocked that there's carrots and yogurt in there <laughs> i think they think there's gonna be like magic nuggets or something i don't know but they're always shocked so i started posting it mm -hmm. and the, that's when it started going crazy mm. oh yeah i and that's again how i found that calling was the response was that i was getting mm -hmm. it wasn't it never has been oh look what i'm eating you should do it's like the response that i was getting kept showing me oh yeah people don't know what to eat oh yeah remember you were that mm. girl Remember, you were the girl in the office. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I know um, how to feed you, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my passion. So half of my excitement when this happened very organically, again, all of a sudden my chubby body is just turning into this crazy, at 38 years old, I'm wearing booty shorts that, <laughs> you know, that I have a right to wear. And I have a 12 pack that keeps emerging more every day. So I'm freaking out with excitement of like, whoa whoa this is the combination man mm -hmm. and so the pit there came the pictures <laughs> here guys share do this bring your lunch this is that that thing that we were always looking for mm -hmm. it looks like this a roast beef sandwich with a hard-boiled egg next to it and some carrots we never knew what it looked like right mm -hmm. and that's why i share and because it got the results uh, and it was happening as you were watching right mm -hmm. you've seen me transform even more yeah yeah i mean even since the first marathon that yeah. we ran you've and it's even so more shredded sharing. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps happening um which again is my example i'm showing you everything i'm doing along the way this is what i'm doing mm -hmm. and um but it, most importantly also too what you see on there on the flip side is what i'm not doing mm -hmm. you never see me out partying you never mm -hmm. see me just being crazy off the hook <laughs> off track forgetting my intentions mm -hmm. you know um it there's a lot of space and grace there's a lot of quiet time on the side of that flip the the food and stuff that goes along with it mm -hmm. um that helps for a happy brain to have a healthy body um so have you completely eliminated alcohol from your diet no no good question good question no um uh, i probably drink every other week have a drink um I really have no place for a lot of drinking in my life naturally. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have time for it. It clouds my creativity, so I don't want it. Mm -hmm. But um, the max, and, and, and I don't even need it anymore, but the max is two drinks two times a week. Mm -hmm. um, 
keeps your system going. Keeps alcohol mm-hmm. is a big deal. Alcohol is a big deal in the world. Mm. Can we talk about that for a second. Sure. Yeah, um, alcohol is a big deal, and for a couple reasons. But if in fact you are trying to lose weight, it's a no go. Mm. You cannot look at my face. You cannot drink alcohol consistently and expect your metabolism to act in a friendly and favorable way. Mm-hmm. Number two, for manifesting. Uh, you need to be as clear and present in your life if you're trying to manifest your most amazing self, your most amazing career, a circle of friends that are clear Mm -hmm. and motivated and inspired. I speak very openly about this. Um, Alcohol can hinder all of that. Mm. And even with the best of intentions, our social obligations can rob us of the clarity it takes to get to our next level. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people don't really associate the two. They think it's a, a you know way we blow off steam or whatever. But mm-hmm. it also is a slippery slope. Mm-hmm. So um, I coach every client on replacing looking at where you drink alcohol and seeing alcohol and food and seeing if you can't replace some of those visits with your friends Clean up some family functions. Mm -hmm. Eliminate alcohol here and there with some sort of um, more more fit behavior. Mm -hmm. The healthy happy hour. Transition that. So, Mm -hmm. um, that's the reality. I'm out hiking too much to go to happy hour. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, but alcohol is a big deal. My toughest downfall is sweets. Wheat. Sweets. Sweet. (laughs) Sugar. (laughs) Yes. Huh? And and I I just love brownies and I love mm-hmm. <laughs> ice cream. So how do you how do you transition away from those? Okay, this is good. Fun and friendly, man. You gotta keep it fun and friendly and that comes with some accountability. So here's how I run my plan and, and it takes some discipline. But I have a zero tolerance in my house. Mm-hmm. Zero. And I mean zero. And what that means is that when I get a brownie outside, Mm -hmm. yesterday I did a nice thing. I folded my neighbor's laundry and she returned the favor by giving me a lovely piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. That allows me to eat that chocolate with sheer delight and go, Mm -hmm. yum, 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 yum. (laughs) I love chocolate so much because I haven't had four pieces that day from Mm -hmm. inside my house. Mm -hmm. So it helps um, keep treats in a treat category mm-hmm. because you want to feel good when you're having them. I want you to feel good when you're, I love a brownie. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to feel guilt free and good when I have a brownie. And the best way for me to do that is to hold myself accountable at home. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I don't have to say no when I'm out. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can, if I want to, and I certainly do, but I don't have to, Oh, yeah. I can't have that. I don't want to be the girl who's lives in the land and I don't want my clients to be in the people who live in the land of cans. So mm-hmm. here's some rules. Fun and friendly. 80 20. If you're eating 80% clean, mm-hmm. and I mean clean, no wrapper, fruits and veggies, lean meats, nice dairies, 20% of your decisions can be fun and friendly and have a good time and don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Everybody eats naughty foods. If you want to know what mine is, the Starbucks, the giant chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I can pass up anything in the world but that. That's um, the one. Just to let you know. I mean, I love mm-hmm. them. There is, you can be shredded and have a 12-pack and um, eat cookies. Mm-hmm. If you keep them in the 20% range, um, 100% clean in your house. That's a bold move. It takes a mm-hmm. minute. And you know what's funny is that you'll think you're clean and then all of a sudden you'll go next level clean and eliminate one more box product or one more. Um, ever The cleaner you can keep your cabinets at home, Mm-hmm. the more fun you can have when you're out. Mm. So try that. Think about it. Are you bring treats in the house right now? No, but I I mean, I've changed a lot, but I I definitely still... It's tough in an office. Oh, uh, it's tough in an because office. Because if there is chocolate on the counter, I will grab a piece. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's a reality. That takes discipline. I mm-hmm. am in the corporate world. I went back to the corporate world and I am faced with it all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, that the realities of you guys having these things brought to you. Yeah. The, yes. the title companies and the it's everybody. Oh, here's some treats. Right? No, you're killing and me. <laughs> everything. And it's everything is a treat. Every kind of thank you 
a reward system um, is all food. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that takes discipline. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. Um, one treat a day is like also a good policy. Yeah. To keep it friendly. Because again, when I, I want you to enjoy it. But that means later when you run, when you're at dinner with somebody and they say, hey, you want to split a dessert? You have to say, no, no. thank you. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's funny because I do tend to be so breezy and like, ah, everything's so great. But you honestly do. It requires self-discipline. Mm-hmm. It really does. And I, I, I like to, again, make that fun and friendly. though. That's not a bad thing. Mm. But it's true. Something I'd like to talk about is the kind of people that you surround yourself on a personal level Mm -hmm. and how have you kind of weeded your garden of the people that weren't making you the best that you could be? Um, Probably the number one question that I get or the number one thing I see on social media is the struggle of who we have around us and and how we feel about it. So amazing question. Um, this is a long, this is ongoing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it is um, part of the journey is who you keep at your table. And I honor my introvertedness and I know that I am better with fewer people at my table. Mm-hmm. I will say that right now. Um, and that is for my type, <laughs> my personality mm-hmm. type. Um, but be the, the, the number one requirement is language. Um, people around me what it, what I expose myself to the net, the bottom line is superior language mm-hmm. um, either pure silence silence which is beautiful uh, I, I'm, I love it um, or upbeat creative talk um, loving talk mm-hmm. um, supportive synergistic language um, there's never a situation ever that I would remain in that is critical low energy you can never you're never allowed to just look at my face and gossip to me (laughs) and that takes courage Mm -hmm. you know that takes courage to get yourself out of that situation gracefully Mm -hmm. um so that is the solid crowd that i keep around me who Mm -hmm. i let around me um getting to that space holy moly schmoly it is a journey right Mm -hmm. you change you ask for change in life and you grow and you you start to require other things and and not everybody goes with you and that is an awesome reality and what i would like to do and and invite people to do is stop making that a bad thing Mm -hmm. stop making that a bad thing i banged my head on it a bunch of times Mm -hmm. before i realized let people move around in my life Mm. They don't, I used to be, I got, I got to break up with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? My old ego-driven self would try and find a way to make this wrong or mm-hmm. make it your fault or make myself the victim. And the courage comes from within and saying that it's up to me what who I let around me. It's up to me what I do with that. And that uh, another person can not believe in my journey or believe in it or we just have some kind of weird energy going on. Mm -hmm. And that I cannot just allow them to wander away from me. Mm. Check out how friendly that is. To let them wander around and when the energy is right, they may wander back. Mm. And guess what? If the energy is never right, they just keep wandering. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Because guess where they're wandering to? more like-minded people more Mm -hmm. people to support their journey Mm -hmm. so they don't have to be i don't have to be present in their journey my ego doesn't have to be screaming you should be you know you (laughs) should still be my best friend or you should still you should be a better this or a better that Mm -hmm. i just see okay change needs to happen and you know that's space and grace again it really comes back to space and grace again that um The table that I keep is friendly and open. And if you have the language and what I need at that moment or what what, what it takes to be there, then you are absolutely welcome and invited. And I will nurture you and love you and give you all kinds of attention. And if not, I absolutely just wish you well. Mm -hmm. And wave (laughs) and shake my booty doing my (laughs) own thing over here though, right? Uh, Nobody has to be right or wrong. Mm -hmm. 
But that is number one. The key to success is who you surround yourself with. The key to success is who you surround yourself with. Mm. And I will tell you um, very openly, like, here's one thing I don't talk about. I'm going to unleash a secret right here on right. your radio show. I love this. Uh, one thing I don't speak about very often ever on social media is um, just because it's a little, still a little too painful and some of the people are still involved and still, still close to me. But my biggest falling out, my biggest disappointment in my entire life and myself, something that I did, and you rarely ever hear me speak like that, mm. is I got caught in the wrong crowd, man. Mm-hmm. I was being the biggest follower you've ever seen. I held secrets I never should have known. I just got off track with the mm-hmm. wrong people. And that lesson still, it was painful enough for me to learn forever that you don't have to be the popular girl. Mm. You are allowed to, when people, or when people of unlike energy just keep wanting to be near you, you're allowed to say, no, I'm excusing myself. Mm-hmm. And I didn't have the power to excuse myself before. I didn't have the grace to excuse myself before. I didn't have the courage to excuse myself. Mm. I didn't have the voice. And the longer I kept quiet, the cloudier I got, and the more off track I got. Mm-hmm. And so now I really honor that space mm. and protect it and fill it with awesome people. Ta da! Awesome. Yeah. But on the flip side of that, right? So now you know because you're on this spiritual journey yourself. I mean, I'm sitting front row to it. Uh, whoa. Check out what happens when you are in the same room as a person who loves and in, in, is interested in your spirit and nurturing you and propelling you. Mm-hmm. It is not even the same ballpark, man. It is not even... When you really have a lover of life on your side, it is um, a crazy energy. Mm-hmm. And it makes you only, like I said, they're not that common. So you search for them mm-hmm. and you nurture them and you try and make more of them where you can. Because mm. uh, it's pretty powerful. So, yeah, not honoring myself is how really one of the biggest secrets how I came to the current place of honoring myself. Mm-hmm. I can feel it still. So. What do you see yourself doing in the next few years and creating? Creating. What do I see myself doing? Keeping myself in this space of pure happiness, inspired happiness, so that I can continue to motivate others. That's it. Bottom line. I think um, I like to, that's my passion. And then the rest, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the journey. Mm-hmm. I do. I like um, uh, speaking is basically where it's at right now. Speaking and, and motivating, teaching. Mm-hmm. I do have ambitions to get on a bigger, um, start speaking on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I have steps in there about really just being of service, keeping myself happy and being of service. Mm-hmm. That's my plan for my life. Okay. <laughs> That's my plan for my life. What was the second part of that? What do you want to create? Mm, more happy people. Mm. More happy people. Um, that is my only, that's what drives me right now. Knowing that I somehow was gifted. I don't question it. I just embrace it. I was gifted the energy to help other people feel good energy. And I know how powerful that is. And that's all I want to do. I wake up in the morning to do that. I wake up in the morning to hit my social media before the sun even comes up, I'm talking to people in Australia, Singapore, Japan, you name it, mo- jiving with some of the mo- most amazing synergy around. Mm-hmm. And I literally wake up ready to do that again. So that's what I want to do. And that's when, with the bigger crowds, the bigger the bigger audiences, that's why. I just want to make, share my light mm-hmm. and help other people find their light. Mm-hmm. Is that your vision for the world? Uh, yes. Yes. I think our vision of the world, my vision of the world, Mm -hmm. is yes, slow. If if I think if everybody could just slow down one ten steps and pull back and be their own change, be their own change. I think we all shoot for these bigger things, or we tend to like. Can you imagine the impact that would have on the world if everybody just slowed down? 
down? Mm -hmm. How much less angry would people be? How many? How much less negativity that would put out into the world? Mm -hmm. How much everything if they just slowed down and nurtured themselves? The ripple effect of that would be <laughs> amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and to segue off that, just to branch off of that, I'm going to talk real quickly about purpose. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that I have found my purpose right now and I feel like the luckiest lady in the world. And that I definitely used to say that before. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? And our purpose is, I believe, it is my understanding to nurture and make the very best of this awesome life we are given mm. and that's our purpose and if we all just acted with here like I, I used to think I had to be out here doing all of these things like I don't have time to volunteer I don't have days to give up I can't go just to Africa for a month and you know what I mean like I thought you had to do this big grandiose thing mm -hmm. and really as soon as I took care of myself and my purpose mm -hmm. my purpose was given to me I am of more service. I am a service to people around me. That's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Simply because I slowed down and pulled back. Mm -hmm. um, so if people need a purpose, I tell this to my clients all the time, you need a purpose, your purpose is to feel good. Own that until your next purpose comes along. Because you're going to get another one. I, I get purposes all the time, <laughs> right? My purpose now, my calling now. We don't have to be the same. Mm -hmm. But people who are in need of a purpose, make your purpose to feel good. Mm-hmm. Your next purpose will be delivered. Mm. Feeling bad won't deliver you anything but more feelings of feeling bad. So, that I know. I could talk with you all day. I could talk all day. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we haven't gotten to a lot of the points. So, I feel like we should have a second podcast because I want to honor and respect the time of our listeners. And we're already over an hour of speaking. So. Yay. Um, I think How much light can I, I would share? love to have you back another time, but um, is there anything before we go today that you feel like you'd really like to share with everybody? Your purpose is to feel good. That is, if you're, it doesn't matter, that, that, that covers you no matter where you are in your journey. If you're sitting here listening right now and you've been, you've had a calling or you've had a feeling or you're, or you're carrying negative feelings, um, do what it takes today to feel a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Just one step, every step counts, and your next that will bring you the clarity to feel good. Mm -hmm. Feel good. Your purpose is to feel good. You deserve to feel good. It is your right to feel good. You are supposed to feel good. <laughs> feel good. It's an, it's a, it can be a big job though, man. Mm -hmm. It can be a big job. So that is my wish for everybody. It's awesome. So, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you so much for letting me share. What is the best way for people to connect with you if they are just in love with your message? Join the team. <laughs> Join the social media team. Um, I will say it. I, I run an, I, I'm very, very, very proud of my team. Um, the social media team. We are a loving and awesome and inspiring and empowered group. We are on Facebook mm -hmm. at um, Facebook backslash Coach Burks. That's B U R K S. So okay. join the team, A team over there on Instagram. I'll definitely um, link up to that in the show notes. Yeah. And, uh, and most importantly, though, the Wellness Playground covers A to Z. It is not a website. It is a playground for you to go feel good at is CoachJoannaBurks.com. And there is a beautiful blog in there on food, fitness, and attitude. I can get you mojoed up somehow. I know it. <laughs> Full definitions on freestyle living. Um, man, I've, I pour my heart out on there to make mm -hmm. people feel good. So CoachJoannaBurks.com is also a great way. Cool. And on Instagram, Instagram, that is one of my favorite spots to connect with you. So I love because it's the Instagram energy, not fantastic mm -hmm. over there. Um, jo Joanna Burks, J O A N N A Burks, B U R K S, awesome. and hashtag lifestyle. Man, I love me some Instagram. Cool. So I'm uh, I'm gonna encourage all of the guests to reach out to us on Instagram, post an image of where yeah. you are enjoying our show and tag us because we'd love to see it. So 
again, I want to thank you so much, Joanna. And, uh, and I look forward to our next podcast because I definitely want to have you back. Feel good, America. I love it. Thank you for having me. Shifters, I could talk to her all day. I'm already looking forward to part two with my very special guest, Joanna Burks. Until then, this has been episode three of Real Shift Radio with Dominic Labriola. Thank you listeners for tuning in, speaking up, and sharing these positive messages of shift. Please continue to connect with me on Instagram at Dial Dominic and share these episodes throughout social media. After all, social media is what you make it. So let's make sure to fill it with inspiring stories of shift. Also, be sure to visit the episode show notes at dialdominic.com slash three to find out how you can connect with Joanna. I'm going to throw a link up to her fitness playground, coachjoannaburks.com. So definitely take some time to peruse that phenomenal resource. Next week, I'm back here with another fit and fine guest, financial coach Ruben Rojas who shares with us all the good work he's doing in his community with his engagement project, Beautify Earth. Until then, shifters, keep it real. 